Hi YouTube and welcome back to part 19 of uh, Faceplates Advanced. Um, we've covered uh, faceplates in the uh, previous videos and just to go back to show you what we did before um, we had a couple of faceplates here that we created on buttons um, and all they do is they give you a message and they then close themselves down on exit. What we're going to do is uh, something that um, would be a nice addition if it was possible. <laughs> what I'm talking about is faceplates don't connect directly to your PLC or to your HMI. They're kind of an independent miniature screen that comes up but they have no physical communications connection to your PLC or to your HMI. So what we're having to do is um, uh, create that connection uh, ourselves. Now, the reason, uh, one of the, the, the reasons for this is, or that I've used in the past, is that I've wanted message warning screens, much like you get with Microsoft when you click a button or you say delete a file and it comes up with a little message, are you sure you want to delete this, yes or no? And they're brilliant because on, on some occasions you may have some buttons on your screen that will do something drastic to your machine. And when the operator presses a button, he may have caught it accidentally, he may have pressed it accidentally, or he didn't know that he wanted to press it. Um, and it's sometimes an idea to put a little message up there saying the same thing. Are you sure you want to do this? Because if you do, it could cut the whole system up. Now just going uh, as a slight sideline here you do have the ability here in WinCC to add scripts and you can create scripts in VB it's all VB scripting the problem is that uh, one of the VB script commands uh, is message box MSG BOX if any of you happen to know VB um, the problem is that message box is not allowed in WinCC. From what I understand from uh, the Siemens uh, website and a couple of engineers I've spoken to in the past, is that uh, message box is a uh, a potential hazard for um, being able to break into your program using viruses or hacking or whatever. So uh, Siemens decided not to allow the use of message box. Now I understand that this is from the flexible uh, point of view. If you get the professional, full, all-blown um, WinCC, you can um, use message box. Um, quite honestly, I just think it's typical Siemens not giving you all the functionality again uh, without paying twice as much for another piece of software. But hey, that's probably just me. Um, so what uh, we're going to do is we're going to create our own little message box. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn a lamp on and send a signal to the PLC. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to copy the lamp that we had on our main screen and I'm going to put it on our, um, on our overview screen. I've also added on the main screen, uh, oops, on the main screen, I've added another button to get us to our overview screen and on the overview screen a button for us to exit back to the main screen again. Okay, so we've put our lamp and our lens on this program now, on this uh, screen, sorry. Um, what I'm just going to make sure is the visibility, I'm going to untag and make sure that we've got nothing that I copied over from the main screen. Okay, so the first thing is, we're going to create a button that is going to say uh, lamp on. We just want to switch our lamp on, simple as that. Okay, oops, there we go. <coughs> Going back to our general and Although we don't really need it, we'll just put that in there. Okay, I'll just size that a little better. 
Okay, so we're going to uh, put our lamp on now. We want to warn the user whether this is going to be, uh, are they sure they want to do this? Obviously this could actually mean machine start or, or anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and create our faceplate. So, for starters, let's start creating our faceplate. So I'm going to start up in the top corner with a rectangle here. And I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to make that half size there. And I'm just going to order that to go to the background so that our button is on the top. I'm going to create another little rectangle just underneath it. And I'm going to order that to the background as well. Okay, and I'm just going to shift it up to create a nice little uh, box. Or two boxes, I should say. I'm going to colour the border and the top fill in uh, blue and I'm going to do the border and the fill colour of the main one in red. I'm now going to add two little buttons. This is the stuff that we've done before um, when we created our faceplate. Okay, and I'm just going to set those texts to yes and click that to no and we're going to stick another little button just a little one and we are going to put on the X onto there okay now not very light is that one so what we'll just do is go to the properties the text and we'll just stick that to bold and that makes it a little bolder okay we'll pop that up in the top corner okay and finally the other object that we want is our or two objects actually we want are you sure okay Again, let's just oops, let's just set the uh, the text a little bigger. Let's make that about 16. Let's bold it up. Let's pop that over there, and we'll put ourselves in a little graphics view. Um, now, notice here that our graphics view is uh, white, and I am going to add in oops a little picture that I made up earlier now I did this in paint okay which is not a problem um, but I advise you to use PNG symbols and the reason for that is the um, if I change the background now of uh, this fill color let's change it to yellow you see how it still leaves that red bit in the triangle or, or outside of the triangle and that's because I used it as a JPEG what I should have really done is created that yellow triangle on a PN or made it so that it went onto a transparent layer and you can only save transparent, uh, transparent layers under PNG files so then it wouldn't matter each time I would have changed the background here this red bit of the background would have gone with it and changed to the same color so that whenever I use this symbol all I would have appeared or all that would have appeared is just a triangle for the fact that I've got it to the red at the moment makes no difference but uh, just in the future I would say and suggest that you uh, you do that um, GIMP is a, a program that you can uh, create symbols in with uh, um, transparent layers and the great thing about it is it's free okay so let's just quickly set our events now so choosing the lamp on button what we want to do is set a bit okay um, so we're going to create our new value tag one okay and that is going to be uh, the animations of it which is here 
the visibility is that when uh, tag one is high it needs to disappear okay we've done this in previous um, uh, tutorials so uh, if you're unsure go back to those the rest of the symbols I'm now going to choose all of the symbols together so if I press uh, I've selected the, the red box if I now press the shift I can select all the other individual items except the lamp on and what we're going to do is enable the visibility to all of those in one foul sweep it saves me doing them individually okay so let's just quickly run this and let's see if we've got everything to work correctly uh, we go to the overview screen we go to our lamp on and there our message box appears notice our lamp on button has gone none of these do anything else at the moment okay so let's just close that down we're on our faceplate let's select our no buttons and our cross now what we need to do is set an event for these so if either of those are clicked again I'm using this multi selection again so I can select two things and change both the sets of properties at the same time we're going to reset the bit which is going to be our tag one we're not going to do anything to the yes button just yet that's for the next video so if we now press our run go to our overview screen hit our lamp on we have our message box appear our lamp on button disappears yes at the moment does nothing but if I click the cross the message box disappears with nothing else happening try check the no button it does the same thing okay so now we've got nothing happening our lamp is still off and our message box comes and goes when it should